Hey everybody, I know 2015 is technically over already, but I got a couple 2015 movies that came out towards the end of the year that I just barely got around to seeing, so we're going to talk about those today. And in this video, we're talking about The Hateful Eight. Appropriately, this is the eighth film from Quentin Tarantino, and it stars Samuel L. Jackson, Kurt Russell, and Jennifer Jason Leigh. This movie takes place in the Wyoming wilderness sometime after the Civil War, where eight rather angry people have taken refuge at a place called Minnie's Haberdashery during a blizzard. You got a couple of bounty hunters, you have a woman who has been captured by one of those bounty hunters, you got a hangman, you have a man who at least claims to be the new sheriff of the town of Red Rock, you got a cowboy, you got a confederate general, and you have a Mexican who claims to be watching Minnie's haberdashery while Minnie is away. And as they settle in to wait out the blizzard, we start getting hints that perhaps one of these people is not who he says he is. And as suspicions rise and people start getting angry and distrustful and, well, hateful, lots of people gonna die. This movie is very much a Tarantino movie through and through, and it is a very slow burn. It takes a while to get going. The first hour of this movie takes its sweet time introducing the characters, and I know Tarantino likes his long, dialogue-heavy scenes, and usually that works pretty well. In this movie, at least during the first hour or so, there were moments where I was starting to feel like some of these scenes were stretched out just for the sake of stretching them out. The movie is three hours long, and honestly, it probably doesn't need to be. And I didn't even see the 70mm Roadshow version, which is supposed to be even longer, and I can't imagine what they could possibly add to that to make it longer. And I don't mind a three-hour movie as long as you have a three-hour story to tell. The Godfather was three hours, Scarface, the Lord of the Rings movies. And I like those, but this movie was three hours and felt like it had maybe two and a half hours of story if we're being generous. Technically, you could make a case that it's not even two and a half hours worth of a story because really, the main conflict in this movie could have been resolved pretty quickly had the characters just taken a different approach. Now, that being said, once everything finally gets going, holy shit, this was a lot of fun. It's got all the things you would expect from Tarantino. You've got plenty of violence and blood and witty banter between the characters and a bit where the timeline jumps around. And the confrontations between all of these eight angry motherfuckers are a lot of fun to watch. The movie is extremely well shot. Everything just looks good gorgeous, from the Wyoming wilderness to the interior of Minnie's haberdashery and the costumes and everything, just... it all looks amazing. There isn't really a hero to speak of, not exactly, because all eight of these people, well, they're called the Hateful Eight for a reason. They're eight very bad people. You could argue that some are less bad than others, and there are moments where you might find yourselves rooting for certain characters, but still, they're eight bad guys. And sometimes that can be an issue, but in this movie, I really didn't have a problem with it because they were all such interesting characters, and I just wanted to sit back and see how this was going to play out. As far as the acting, there really isn't a bad performance anywhere in this movie. There are no weak spots in this cast. This is just a solidly acted movie. Samuel L. Jackson is awesome, but I'm sure I don't need to tell you that because he's always awesome. Walton Goggins plays the new sheriff of the town of Red Rock, or at least he claims to be the new sheriff. Some of the characters have their suspicions whether he's telling the truth on that or not. I really liked him in this movie. He was probably my second favorite performer. I'll get to my favorite in just a minute. Kurt Russell was also pretty good. You got some of the Tarantino regulars like Tim Roth and Michael Madsen. I like them as well. It was nice to see Michael Madsen giving a shit for a change. And even Channing Tatum was pretty good in this. I've never really been a huge fan of his as an actor, but he was rock solid in this movie. I gotta hand it to him. But in my opinion, Jennifer Jason Lee really stole this movie as the prisoner Daisy Domergue. This woman is a murderer and a raging psychopath and just downright evil to the core. And man, she can be frightening at times. And yet there are moments where she almost becomes sympathetic in a way. You wouldn't think someone so evil could be sympathetic, but somehow she pulls it off, and it's just really well done. Now, I did have a few problems with the ending of this movie. There were a few things in there that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Without getting into spoilers, I will just say there were moments where I'm thinking, wait, why didn't you do this? Or why did you do this? That was kind of stupid. Or how the hell did you pull this off? 
moments like that that just really didn't quite add up. It didn't really ruin the movie for me, but giving the ending a rewrite definitely could have improved things. The movie is very similar to one of Tarantino's older movies, Reservoir Dogs, and even he will admit that he was influenced by Reservoir Dogs when making this movie. And in a way, it is kind of weird that Tarantino is basically remaking one of his own movies. Uh, it's, it is a very similar setup. You've got a bunch of people trapped in this one location, and at least one of them is not who he says he is, and eventually a bunch of people start dying. You even have some similar cast members in Tim Roth and Michael Madsen. Personally, I thought this movie was interesting enough on its own that I didn't really care about the similarities to Reservoir Dogs, but I could see some people taking issue with that. In the end, while this movie does have some issues and it's definitely not Tarantino's best work, it is still a solid effort. This is a Tarantino movie through and through, so if you're not a fan of his work, you have no reason to see this one at all. But if you are, I can at least recommend it as a matinee. And that's it for The Hateful Eight, so until next time, take care.